If you anneal brass, then at one point or another, you're gonna run into a situation where you don't know if a piece of brass got annealed twice, and that might leave you a little bit concerned. So we're gonna take the time to anneal brass, not once, not five times, but 10 times to see what happens on paper, and I'm curious what you think's gonna happen. So stick around to the end and see if you're right. Let's go have some fun. I'm F-Class John for Ultimate Reloader, and I'm up here at the Ultimate Reloader Ranch, ready to do some torture tests on some brass. Now, I've annealed thousands, if not tens of thousands of pieces of brass, and there have been times where I've accidentally left some brass that was unannealed next to brass that had been annealed, and I said to myself, gosh, I just don't know which ones were annealed and if it's safe to anneal the other half. Well, at SHOT Show not long ago, I talked to Matt and Alex from Amp Annealing, and I asked them, what happens if you anneal brass twice? And we had a nice little conversation about it, and they assured me it does absolutely nothing to hurt the brass. And to me, this was a big relief because I would rather know that I can double anneal a piece of brass than leave some brass unannealed, and that could potentially have a bigger effect on the work hardening, the long-term effects, splitting necks, all kinds of things that might happen. So while I was up here, I thought, what's better than annealing once Let's anneal five times and then let's anneal 10 times. Now, keep in mind, we are not talking about over annealing. Over annealing would be overheating or underheating the brass. We are talking about using the correct setting in our amp, but multiple times after we've allowed the brass to cool each time. And I think this is probably the biggest scenario most people might find them in. Now, to do this, we're going to obviously use our amp. Mark II DB, we're taking a known load that we absolutely uh, feel shoots nice groups. And that way we have a good baseline for not just the one, five and 10 times annealed brass, but also some virgin brass just as a baseline. So let's get started. First thing we need to do, we obviously need to anneal the brass. Now I've decapped this brass and we need to put it into the annealer before we do any of the sizing and expanding and any of the other parts of loading. We have our virgin brass, not gonna touch it because it's been annealed at the factory. We then have another 15 pieces of brass that has been fired twice with no annealing so far. So we're gonna have one times annealing, five times annealing, and 10 times annealing. And that's gonna be anneal, let it cool to the touch, then anneal again. It's gonna take some time, so let's get started on it. Now that we have gone through the process of getting our annealing test ready, it's time to finish up the reloading process. We're gonna head over to the Redding T7 with the Creedmoor Adaptive Head. We've got some Forster dies in there to get this brass sized. Once we're done sizing it, we need to get it primed. We're gonna be using Federal Small Rifle over on our Primal Rights CPS. And now that we've got the brass sized and primed, we're dropping our powder out of the Matchmaster. We're using Hodgden 4350. And of course, to finish it off, we're gonna be using these brand new Sierra MKX 142 grain hunting bullets. And just like that, we've got our 20 rounds ready to go test. We're gonna be shooting them out of this custom 6.5 Creedmoor out of the Ultimate Reloader Shop. It's built on a bat action, and I have shot this rifle a few times on my various trips up here, and I really like it. It shoots easy, it's incredibly accurate, and that's what I need for a baseline type test like this. So. With that, we're gonna head up into the hills and we're gonna see what happens to our groups.
and we are back from the mountain. I've got my target and we're gonna go over some of the data here to see what it looks like. Now, the first unfired group came in at a group size of 0.35, very respectable, and probably not all that unexpected from most of you as you were watching. It had an SD of 12.8 on the five shots, and it did have a rather high ES of 34.4. Again, not outside my expectations. Uh, as somebody who shoots a lot of unfired brass, you can get some variability in that first firing. Well, they had an average velocity of 28.25 on it, and I would say it was a really good start so that we knew what to expect if we had big or small groups as we moved on. Now, we look at the once annealed and our group size went up just a little bit to 0.48, so just under half an inch. Our ES did drop a little bit to 24, as did our SD down to 8.2. And our average speed was right in line with the unfired brass, just a few feet per second faster at 28.29. If we go to the five times anneal, this is where you may say, hey, I'm expecting to see a difference here. But in fact, we actually saw a reduction on every number possible. Group size down, 0.36, ES down, 17.1, and our SD down to 6.2, and almost no change in velocity compared to the once annealed. You know, we were at 28.29 on the once versus 28.30 on the five times. The big shocker is going to be the 10 times annealed brass. Group size, 0.68, just a little over half an inch, a little under three quarter of an inch, whatever you wanna call it. So still within the range of what we were shooting and we had that one little flyer that you saw. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty sure that was my shooting. But either way, our ES went up with just a crack to 24.3, pretty much matching the single annealed. And our SD went to 8.9 again very similar to the once annealed. So what is it showing? Well, there is the possibility that as you anneal more and more, it sort of smooths out and you get sort of a consistent number as you move on. What I do know, however, is that annealing more than once does not have an effect on your group size, has a negligible effect on your velocities, your SDs and your ESs, and should give everybody comfort that if you accidentally have a pile of brass that gets annealed twice, you have nothing to worry about. And for me as a competitor, that is priceless. And with that, I hope you do get a chance to have some fun in the reloading room, get out and shoot, and we will talk to you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, Fill out the information, boom, you're getting ultimate reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.